Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage in the beautiful state of Maine. Today I'm working on my 500 five inch big block Chevy that I traded for the 56 Chevy wagon. I need to finish it and deliver it to the guy. I had most everything to do so with the exception of I didn't know if I had the correct length push rods. In a big block Chevy, the intake and exhaust push rods are different lengths. And this has a solid roll of camshaft, which normally means in a big block Chevy, you have a 3 8 diameter push rod. I had quite a selection of push rods, but nothing that's going to work. So I need to properly measure and order some. Just another hundred bucks or so. <laughs> that's one of my favorite sayings. Unless you're dealing with a completely stock engine, I can almost guarantee you that any modifications to the valve train, camshaft, lifters, rocker arms, the valves themselves, are going to change the length of the push rod that you need. Your goal with setting the length of the push rod is you want the, if it's a regular rocker, the contact point on the valve, or if it's a roller rocker, you want the wheel to pretty much operate in the center of the valve. Now, due to its Geometry, it's going to have a sweep. So you want to optimize that. So you're not putting undue side load on the valve, which is going to eventually wear out the valve guide because you're pushing the valve sideways. And at high RPM, it's, you know, things can really get messy. So the goal is to keep the roller in the middle of the valve stem tip. So how are we going to check it? When checking the push rod length and eventually adjusting the valve lash, I use the most universal method that I know of. There are several different ways to accomplish the same thing. However, the EOIC, exhaust opening, intake closing, procedure is the easiest to remember for me. I don't need to remember firing order or move the crankshaft in certain locations or spin it 180 twice. I don't need to do any of that. All I need to do is rotate the engine typically by hand, or you can bump the starter, but I prefer to do it by hand. Roll the engine over in the direction it normally rotates, and when the exhaust lifter or rocker arm start to move, depending on your perspective, if the intake's on, you're probably looking at the rocker arm. If the intake's off, you can just watch the lifter. As soon as the exhaust lifter starts to rise, you're gonna work on the intake side. You can check for push rod length, or you can adjust valve lash, in that position. When you're done with that, you're gonna to continue to rotate it over until the intake opens all the way and starts to close, intake closing, I see. And then you can do the exhaust side. It's that simple and that, I believe, works on every overhead valve internal combustion engine made. And you simply do that cylinder by cylinder. You only gotta do it eight times <laughs> and you're done, just like that. And like most specific automotive procedures, you're gonna have a chance to buy some more tools. Fortunately, for checking push rod length, they're relatively inexpensive. You need an adjustable push rod. I have two or three of these. This particular one will adjust about the one inch difference between the intake and exhaust push rods on a big block Chevy. So I can use one for both sides. That's super handy. What's not super handy is the adjusting nuts themselves that lock it into place interfere with the guide plate. Some people leave the guide plates off to do it. I prefer not to on a big block Chevy. I can do the exhaust side. I can put this down through and put the nuts down by the lifter so it's not gonna interfere with the guide plate without disassembling anything. And on the intake side, I just take Loosen the two studs, take the intake rocker stud out, flip the guide plate out of the way, set it in there and reassemble it. It only takes a few seconds. And that way everything is at its proper height. So that's my preferred method. You need something. Well, you don't need this. This is a push rod length checker. That's its official name. A funny name, but a name nonetheless. Now on a big block Chevy, you have to flip it over because it has canted valves. I have one of these for a small block Chevy. Small block Chevy, they're all in a row. The same one works on all of them. On a big block Chevy, you've got four of each on each head. So 
So in its correct position, you can put this on the rocket stud. This side's gonna contact the end of the valve. And in theory, you would adjust your adjustable length push rod to just touch the back side of this. And that is supposed to be the ideal length. Well, I'm gonna show you, it's really not. It's close, the engine would run probably just fine that way, but if you fine tune it a little bit and actually watch the sweep of the roller on the valve, I do that by simply painting the end of the valve with a Sharpie. You could use machinist dye if you want, but this is a whole lot easier. You just paint the end of it, assemble it down to zero lash, roll the engine over a couple times. If you're not getting a good imprint, put your finger on the roller so the roller won't move. That'll make a very defined mark. While you're doing this, if you have killer valve springs, you should install the lightweight checking springs. These are for checking push rod length and also piston to valve clearance. Not what we're talking about today. So today we're just talking about push rod length. These are a great idea. Today my valve springs are only medium strength. So I've gone ahead and done it many times using the adjustable push rod. This would probably bend or die if you were, you know, exposed it to the super heavy springs, but again, middle of the road springs. I don't have any trouble using the springs that are already installed on the head and checking the length that way. And the last piece of the puzzle, you need something accurate to the thousands to measure the length that you have determined to be optimum. In this case, I have a cheap, it's a digital caliper I would prefer a manual one, you know, just analog, if you will. No batteries to wear out that way. But either way, you're going to end up, whatever the length may be, and then you can try to order the exact length you measured. You're probably going to have to settle for something close unless you're having them custom made. But pretty much all the range of sizes are out there. You know, if you want an 8650, you might have to settle for an 8625 or an 8630. Give up a few thousands either way, but as you get playing around with the rock arounds, you'll see that you can adjust 10, 20, 30 thousandths, and it doesn't make that big a difference. It makes a difference for sure, but again, we're optimizing from just using the standard tool, so there are no set length push rods unless you buy a cam kit that's all engineered they still don't know your valve height and other factors so you have to pretty much measure everything that isn't stock or you can be like me as a teenager young 20 something i was drag racing a big block chevy and i learned all about valve trains the hard way. It's the only engine trouble I ever had. I could never figure out why initially. And then through reading and studying and just the passage of time, you realize that you created all your own problems by not knowing how to properly check things. So that's that. Here we are at the engine. I rotated it in its correct rotation until the intake valve fully opened and started to close. And now I'm working on the exhaust side of the number one cylinder. I put the checking tool touching the end of the valve and I adjusted the adjustable push rod until it touches the underside of the checking tool. This is a manly tool for a big block Chevy. That's the correct part number, 42133. And you can see intake, it would go this way exhaust that way. Now I'm going to paint the end of the valve tip with my Sharpie, install a rocker, take it down to zero lash, and roll the engine over two revolutions. You want to be sure your locking device for the adjuster nut, this will eventually have a stud girdle so these will be replaced but I'm just using them now for checking the length. You want to make sure this is backed off and this is actually at zero lash. There's nothing else artificially holding anything out of position. So you're going to get a true reading. 
as you can see in this case, I'm doing it not quite live, but for the first time, that is a nice wear pattern. You could probably shorten up the push rod a few thousandths and get it ideal, but if you watch a big block Chevy sweep all across the valve, it's pretty dramatic. So that's actually pretty good. Let's go measure. And just like that, you have a number to work with. You can read that. And now you need to go shopping to get something close to this. It can be a little less, a little more, but not much. A few thousandths either way. So I'll do some shopping and see what's available. I need to repeat this for the intake side and then go spend some more money. So in this case, of course, while I'm filming, the checking tool was pretty accurate. Many times and often I won't even get it out of the box. I'll just use my Sharpie and my eyeball. I'll adjust the adjustable push rod so the roller looks like it's going to do its thing on the top of the valve pretty good. Roll it over a couple times, adjust the push rod, and just center my sweep as best I can because in a big block it tends to favor the outside toward the inside. So ultimately, in theory, it would start on the, slightly on the inside and go toward the middle. That doesn't seem to happen, especially on the exhaust valve of a big block Chevy, but your results may vary. But the goal is to just try to get it to run in the middle. So I hope you got something out of this, relatively short and sweet. Again, I'm just an engine assembler because I do not own a machine shop that I can actually do a whole lot of engine modifications. Normally I'd say I wish I did, but at this point, where would I put it? <laughs> so have a great day. I'll be back with you in a couple days. If we get some push rods, we're gonna have to set the valve lash. Very similar procedure with a few different, uh, you know, tidbits of information to pass on. So let's do that in a few days.